This season was filled with amazing national park experiences, views, campgrounds, and lifelong memories. <laughs> Each season, we like to do a recap to break down what we learned so you can have an even more enjoyable experience if you choose to follow in our footsteps. You could do Yellowstone, Yosemite, Zion, in this episode, we'll be providing a recap of our route, the national parks we visited, the campgrounds we stayed in, the hidden gems not to miss, helpful resources and apps when visiting national parks. And we'll be answering questions from the KYD Facebook page, like RV size limitation, and some of the tips for traveling to national parks with dogs. No matter how pretty it is, it's business time. Business time on the beach. It's business time! This season's route, the National Park Blitz, included Zion, Mesa Verde, Capitol Reef, Mount Rainier, Olympic, North Cascades, Glacier, Devil's Tower, Mount Rushmore, and the Wind Cave. Before we dive in, here's a little inspiration to hit the road and visit some of our stunning national parks. All right, is there any, uh, any inspirational, inspirational talk? No. No. Check this out. This is so cool. You could do Yellowstone, Yosemite, Zion, Saguaro. Get this right. Get Let's this right. How count. many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Look Wait, at this. Seriously? I got one. I got a mug well, pop used that it. fits in here. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls it out of the back of the truck. 11? 12, 11? Oh, 14, 14, 14. That's awesome. Isn't that great? Just a little paradise. I know. Wow. Is there anything better than a park ranger? I, they are spectacular. They're Most of them. I mean, there's been a couple. But hey. Really? You gotta bring it down the mood. <laughs> okay. I just heard a request. Oh, you're not even gonna try it first? I know it won't work. Go for it, take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! He's the whisperer. We got a first class seat available now, man. We got a free premium upgrade. Well, based upon your, your miles that you put in, you can, I'll upgrade you. No cost, no cost. I'm so excited, man. Yeah. Many people have commented on how much they've enjoyed the music from this season. So, we put together a playlist for you on Spotify for free. 
All you need is a Spotify account. And to make it easy, just pause the screen and use the QR code here, or use the link in the description below. These are great tracks for your next road trip. Now, let's get started talking about campgrounds. Staying inside the national parks really does add to the experience if you're able to get a reservation or you fit. And we'll talk about that more in detail shortly. There are a few national park campgrounds that deserve some KYD appreciation, including Mesa Verde, not only because it accommodates larger RVs, but being in wide open spaces is so peaceful, not to mention the perfect place for Starlink. Although we didn't stay at Fruta Campground inside Capitol Reef, we wish we did. This is insane. Yeah? This is so pretty. I can't believe we've never seen this. Wow. The castle. Oh, there's the castle. Is that the castle? That's the castle. Spectacular. Okay. We got a hike. We got a stamp. Yes, we we got a scenic drive. Let's go for a scenic drive. Let's go. We visited Capitol Reef in late August and figured we'd need full hookups to run AC for Charlie. But this was before we knew that Capitol Reef was at 5,400 feet in elevation. And during our stay, the weather was fine. The campground was nestled into the rocks and surrounded by apple orchards, just outside the scenic drive you'll be sure to take. Of course, it can get hot here, so you'll want to check temps before arriving. Now, let's travel up the west coast to Mount Rainier. We have found ourselves in another no internet situation. Anyway, I feel like a junior ranger. <laughs> I feel like I need stamps hey, and like a card. Hey. <gasps> we need to get our stamp! <laughs> kind of hard to record the beauty. <laughs> You're talking shop. <laughs> Mark. Mark, Tyler, yeah. good to meet yeah. you. Hey, bud. How are yeah. you? Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Chickens, goats, zucchini, mountain biking, road biking, skiing. I mean, there's not much more I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> Mount Rainier turned out to be the highlight for us this season, not just because of the stunning views, great company, and epic riding, but being able to stay at Cougar Rock Campground certainly added to the experience. Located inside the park and halfway from the park entrance to the top at Paradise Inn, we visited Mount Rainier in late September and only two loops were open. Both were dry camping, only with one being generator friendly. Keep that in mind when making your reservation. Not too far from Rainier is one of the largest national parks in the United States, as well as one of the least visited, Olympic National Park. But you parking. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, look at that trail. It's something else, isn't it? We met so many great people today. Yes. Just one awesome camping story after the next. Yeah. I only have 15 moves to do all this. <laughs> We were lucky to get a site in Soul Duck Campground near the Hot Springs. This campground will remind you of the enchanted forest with variations of moss growing on nearly everything you see. There's a village campground, so to speak, that includes water and electric, but if you have solar or a generator like us, we highly recommend staying in the dry camping loop. You might be wondering, are national parks or national park campgrounds big rig friendly? 
And what size is considered a big rig? Unfortunately, there is no definitive answer for either question. There's an unspoken rule that most national parks allow up to 35 feet inside the park. Like, I think 35 is what they call the max. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some 50 footers in there at the, at the group one. Oh, okay. have a group camping ground too. But this depends on the location, and it has more to do with the owner's ability to not block traffic or damage the vegetation. So for the purpose of this conversation, let's say that a big rig is anything over 35 feet. In fact, there are many national parks that do accommodate RVs over 35 feet, but they may be hard to find and have only a few sites available. Because the Airstream is only 30 feet, we have found that we can fit into almost any site. In some cases, it takes some more effort to get level. <laughs> this might be a little harder than I thought. Because <laughs> I can't, I can't turn that much this way. Or I'll end up in this ditch right here. Okay. Taking a, a less or more approach to the whole perfect thing. <laughs> you moved the rock. But I'm level. <laughs> Look at that. Now what about the front? Nine, Nine inches? Nine I mean, inches. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Not with that we're just going to have to move our belt. <laughs> <laughs> Many people wonder if this includes just the RV or your tow vehicle as well. The maximum length is applied only to your RV, not your combined tow vehicle and trailer or tow vehicle and motorized RV. But in some campgrounds, you'll need to park your tow vehicle elsewhere. There's still another campground we discovered this season worth mentioning. When you visit Devil's Tower National Monument, America's first national monument, by the way, you'll love Belle Fouche River Campground, located just below Devil's Tower. And if you're able to visit during the fall, the weather will be perfect and the aspens will be shimmering. Speaking of weather, when is the best time to visit a national park in the West and how do you avoid crowds? The answer is the same for both questions. Visit during the shoulder season. Although you do risk that it could start snowing here, but the shoulder season has been awesome. I think the weather's been great. It's been warm during the day, cool at night. We've extended our time here two extra nights, which we wouldn't ever be able to do in the middle of the summer. Just getting a reservation is pretty hard. The shoulder season, meaning just before or after peak season, which tends to be the summer. But not in all cases. When visiting Colorado, you're not the only one who wants to see the vibrant aspens change color in the fall, so peak season might extend a little later. By visiting the parks a little earlier or a little later than everyone else will, you'll not only avoid crowds, but you will be able to have a little more flexibility in your trip planning. If you're only able to visit during peak season, no problem. Just start planning six months or a year in advance. That's right now, by the way, and it's good to have some backup plans, such as Harvest Hosts or Boondockers Welcome with some dry camping options to fill in the gaps. I, I like being on a farm. Productivity increases by 38% just when camping on a farm. Hey, you know what I'd like? We need some chickens. Is, um, we need some chickens. Okay, we need chicken. <laughs> Absolutely. When better. I when I walk through this farm oh and God. I look around, this is this is what I'm thinking. Wow! <laughs> wow! All I can say is wow! What do you want? This! This! I want this! Oh, this is what I want. <laughs> Many people ask about how to avoid crowds in general, and it's easier than you might think. Go early. It's amazing how few people are up to see the sunrise. And you'll be shocked, even during peak season, that you'll have some of the best views all to yourself. Unless you're taking a picture at Mesa Arch in Canyonlands. Then bring your boxing gloves. The secret's out. All right, there are so many people here, but every, everyone here is like, legit photographer yeah. and I'm over there setting up a GoPro. <laughs> we got National Geographic behind us. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, I've got a GoPro and a gorilla upon here. Step out of the way.
The Recreation.gov app has been a tremendous resource this season, not only for up-to-date park information, but having everything in one place for our park entrance reservation when required, tour reservations, and even campgrounds. Just remember to take a screenshot of your reservations should there be no cell phone coverage when you arrive. After all, it's a national park. Cell phone coverage is limited and sometimes non-existent. There is no cell phone coverage in the park. We're actually using Starlink marvelously. <laughs> it's amazing, okay? But if you don't have cell phone coverage, what I was gonna say is, take your tour ticket and take a screenshot of it because yeah. when the guide said, I'll meet you down at the gate and check your tickets, there was just kind of a collective moan. A little of bit the, of panic. <laughs> of the whole group. Yeah. Okay, welcome to Mesa Verde. Thank you. Uh, do you have a National Parks Pass? Um, It expired. Can we get a new one? Yeah, the annual pass is $80. Good until the end of next August. Thank you. You may already have a National Park Entrance Pass, but if not, it's worth researching which America the Beautiful Pass is right for you. There are heavy discounts for some, and even free options for military service, federal volunteers, and if you're in the fourth grade. Here's a chart to discover more with a link below. But look into each option carefully, as there are benefits you might not even know, such as 50% off some campground reservations. We tend to make National Park campground reservations in advance, but prefer the flexibility of not having reservations at all. This works for our lifestyle, but it could be tricky if you have a particular date that you need to be in and out. In order for us to keep our flexibility, we use Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome, so we can land in an area and then make plans, especially for one night stays where we prefer not to disconnect or set up camp. Not only does this provide a unique camping experience. We've been to a lot of vineyards. Yes. But I've never been next to a corn stalks like this. And Caleb. A crop. Uh -huh. Here's the deal. Okay. If any baseball players come out of there tonight, I want you to tell me. Wait, what movie is that from? <laughs> okay, you must have heard that. And a chance to meet other members, but in some cases, no dishes, when we can find a host that serves dinner. When we're running a bit ahead of schedule and we need a place to stay during a busy weekend or need a place longer than just one night, we typically look into Boondockers Welcome. This is phenomenal. We're literally in someone's backyard. There's roosters behind us. There's a alert dog. He's mm -hmm. there just to alert. Mm -hmm. And um, the homeowner is not home right now, but it's a Scott. beautiful property. Uh, but yes, oh my goodness. Beautiful, yeah. Isn't it great? I, yeah, I, I'll take two. And now that locations are integrated into the Harvest Host app, it makes it even easier for us to use. Of course, another resource available to you is our blog. This season, we created an RV travel guide for each of the national parks mentioned in this video. You can find them at keepyourdaydream.com and then the blog. We include everything you need to know when planning your RV trip to these national parks. While you're there, hop on our email list so you can keep up to date with special announcements, events, and other KYD news. When we asked for questions on the KYD Facebook page, the most asked question was about dogs. And rightfully so. We heard that 68% of RVers travel with their dog. There are some national parks that are known to be pet friendly, such as Shenandoah, Olympic, or the Grand Canyon where you can bring your dog anywhere above the rim, or even Acadia National Park, where dogs are allowed on many trails. <laughs> Did he lie down? When he first started and he was like running and he was so eager, I was like, you know, maybe I, you know, I underestimated him. Maybe he's a hiker now. <laughs> no. Charlie. Okay. <laughs> We're going this way, guys. I'm not gonna we're look at you. That, we're making that I'm not gonna look at you. <sighs> Good boy, Charlie. Yet, there are other parks such as Zion that are known not to be so pet friendly, and that's likely due to the amount of traffic the park gets or how steep the hikes are. All national parks allow your dog into the park to camp with you. So our approach is to bring Charlie, no matter where we're going, and find out the restrictions when we arrive. If Charlie isn't able to come on the trails or explore with us, 
We'll either dry camp when the weather is nice or find an RV park just outside with full hookups so we can leave the AC running while we're away. We did an entire Amazon Live on traveling with pets that you can watch and we'll include the exact link in the description below. Okay, hold on, you can't just do it upside down. Okay, wait, okay, 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 okay. But look, look, there it is. It, the it, works, it works really well, but mostly it doesn't spill. So when the travel trailer is going side to side like this, it goes up on the side and it goes back in. During that live stream, we talked about some of the products that we use for monitoring temperatures and how to keep Charlie safe. Come on. Got a bone? Come on. Come on. Got a bone? Look at this. Come on. Come on, Charlie. Charlie. Come on, you know you want it. Many people asked about taking dogs on the trails, and the best resource we've found for that is All Trails. This app is not only great for finding the perfect hike, but it'll tell you if a trail is dog friendly. This is our go to app when we arrive at almost any destination as we love to explore nature through hiking trails. Here's a hot tip. If you're hiking with a dog in the Southwest, be sure to bring a small tooth comb to pull out stickers, thorns, or should they have a run-in with cacti. Charlie, that mouse doesn't want to play. That mouse right now, He's scared for his life. I know you just want to play with it. But Charlie. Charlie. You gotta leave that mouse alone, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Charlie. Charlie, come here. Come on. You cannot eat that mouse. Okay? Hidden gems have earned their name for a reason. After all, they're hidden. Putting a little extra effort into discovering something is what makes it worthwhile. I think the thrill is in finding one. Yes. Yes, you've got to satellite, earth the situation up, and then sit here. I think that bringing um, maybe some snacks. Oh, yeah. Leave yeah. no trace. Yes. But bringing something so you sit here for a while and you just listen to the water. Yeah. And it's exactly why you came. Yeah. You likely won't find a hidden gem on the internet. By the time it makes it there, there will be nothing hidden about it. But if you're even a little outgoing, talk to your neighbors. Other RVers and camp hosts want you to have the same experience they had and will usually tell you exactly where to go and what to look for. But we're happy to share a couple things you shouldn't miss, especially when you're visiting Capitol Reef. Be sure to stop in and get the pie, but go in the morning because after lunch, they'll likely be gone. Pie. You still have pies? Oh, you did. Oh, really? What time do they sell out by typically? Okay. When visiting Glacier, head over to McDonald Lodge and partake in happy hour while enjoying the sunset and the view of the lake. Sadly, this is another experience we missed by a single day. Okay, well, we came down here to get some drinks. We brought our own little charcuterie board. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a sign that says close for the season. <laughs> But we still have a view and great friends, and so we could just hang out and enjoy. Visiting Mount Rushmore is a classic U.S. road trip, but experiencing it in the evening is even better. So we hear. We missed that ceremony too, by only five days. So traveling in the shoulder season has its advantages, but don't push it or you might just miss all of the don't miss activities. This is awesome. Isn't this cool? Uh huh. Look at this tunnel. That is something else. It feels narrower than it is. But uh, this truck's pretty big, and I think I've got. I think I've got six inches to a foot on each side. Oh! Of course, one of the most overlooked hidden gems can be the people you're with. Your friends and family can take a regular trip to the next level. When you have time together in a location like a national park, you're provided with the opportunity to connect during hikes, cooking dinner, sharing stories over the campfire of peaks and dips that you've experienced along the way, and definitely a good game or two. And then point. Okay. One arm. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Kick me out, see what happens to your civilization. See what happens. 
Join us next week for part one of the Ride miniseries as Mark, Caleb, and our friend Bill ride from Michigan to Florida while I had my hands full doing all the RV stuff. Okay, hold on. I'm going to spin this wheel. Okay. If you found this season recap video helpful, or at least you got one good idea, give it a like and let us know. We love being a small part of your story and sharing our experiences to help you. As always, we're glad you're here and we look forward to spending some time with you next Sunday. Hold on to the hand of self-destruction I'm back to a place that I left a long time ago Just give me a sec while I smoke this cigarette Thank you.